by Chill. Is he going to take the EA? Fenway Park is ready for game one of the American League Championship Series between the Detroit Tigers and, of course, the Boston Red Sox. I'm Chad Finn, joined by Nick Cafardo for pregame Today Live. Nick, first question, I guess, what do you make of the pitching matchup? Uh, do they need to get this one about against Anibal Sanchez with Scherzer and Verlander lurking? You know, the crazy thing is, uh, Chad, that, uh, you know, San Sanchez led the league in ERA, so he's like, you know, <laughs> he's their third guy, yeah. so it's a great it's a great. Uh, you know, if you have to alter your pitching staff, what a way to do it with uh, going with the ERA leader in the American League. So, uh, you, you know, I, I don't think it's uh, imperative that they win the game, but uh, so they certainly want to with uh, uh, with this situation. And then, you know, being able to go with Scherzer and uh, Verlin at two and three is uh, is pretty impressive. So uh, it's just in reverse order. And, um, you know, the Tigers obviously uh, have been able to hit Lester in the past, and uh, we'll see if they can do that again. Yeah, Lester had that great start a, a few weeks back against Detroit that was encouraging. I think because of all the talk about the stacked Tigers rotation, we really haven't talked much about the Red Sox rotation. How much pressure is on Lester tonight to come out in game one and, and get the Red Sox off on the right foot? Yeah, it's it's very important. I You know, I think obviously, you know, we have the Miguel Cabrera factor where he's not 100%. So if they can offset him and, uh, and neutralize that lineup uh, at, in this ballpark, uh, it would give them a, a great lift, uh, you know. I, obviously, Cabrera hit the two-run homer in Game Five, and it almost looks like he's kind of coming coming out of it. So uh, they want to make sure they keep him down and uh, keep the rest of that lineup down, you know. And the, I, I've said before, I, they're both great lineups, um, but Boston really has that advantage with the uh, uh, being able to run, you know, like they can. We got this misty weather behind us, Nick. Uh, does that have an impact on one team more than the other? You, you mentioned you think the Red Sox lineup's a little bit better, and it's obviously their home field. Does that uh, does that affect things in terms of them uh, doing their thing tonight? Yeah, I think anytime you're at home and, and you get a little weather, you you used to it. They've they've played in this stuff before here, and uh, it's not it's not like the Tigers haven't, but. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, when you have uh, the disadvantage of, uh, you know, the left fielder maybe not being familiar with the left field wall and the ball's coming off of that and maybe the ball's a little slippery and, and you get all those kinds of things going on out there. The outfielders in right field, obviously, a big, big ground to cover. Uh, if it's wet out there, it could be a little, you know, hazardous for some of the uh, outfielders. But uh, other than that, I think it's, it's pretty even. You mentioned the, the, the uh, change in left field for the Tigers. Johnny Peralta is playing out there. Obviously, it's a short left field. Manny Ramirez did it for years. Johnny Gomes has done it. You can get away with a, a, a subpar defensive outfielder out there. But this is a guy who really hasn't played there at all. What do you make of Leland putting him in there? You know, he's going for the offense, and, uh, and I can't blame him for that. You know, uh, when you have two great offensive teams like that, you, you're already kind of limiting yourself a little bit at shortstop with Iglesias there offensively. Uh, but you're making up for it defensively, so you got to you got to offset it somewhere. It's better than Andy Dirks out there. You know what? What's the difference really uh, as to how they play the wall? Uh, you know, uh, the, the only thing is obviously we saw with Tampa Bay, uh, there were some balls that kind of came off the wall a little strangely in that series that uh, they weren't able to handle, and uh, I can't imagine that Peralta would be able to handle it either. But they're just uh, hoping that the the bouncers are true off the wall for them. Yeah, what was Joe Madden's uh, phrase for that, getting Fenway parked or something? So may, we'll see if that happens with Johnny Peralta tonight. Uh, you mentioned uh, Miguel Cabrera, who's coming off the hip and hamstring injuries. Uh, just two home runs at the end of the season. Conversely with the Red Sox, David Ortiz has been on a tear. Uh, he hit 444 in his career against Verlander, Scherzer, and Sanchez, which just blows my mind. Is, uh, will the Tigers even bother with him, will, or will they do what Tampa Bay did late in that series and pitch around him? Yeah, I, you have to pitch around him. I mean, I, I know that Mike Napoli can hurt you and, and all that, but he's right-handed. Uh, and, uh, you know, the left-handed hitters in this lineup, uh, especially Ellsbury, Ortiz, they can't really let these guys hurt them. They have to off offset them somehow. So, uh, you know, they, I'm sure that Jim Leland, uh, he's not afraid to walk anybody, you know, if he has to walk them and, and uh, do that. But you have to do that with Ortiz. He's red hot. He's... Uh, and he's determined, uh, you know, just talking to him recently, that uh, he wants to have a great postseason and lead this team uh, to another championship. So, I, you know, you, you better be very careful with him. 
Any other X factor here for the Red Sox? Dustin Pedro Doria struggled a little bit against Tampa Bay, but there have been other guys that pick him up. There's always power right-handed pitchers. Yeah. You'd think he'd be a left-handed hitter, maybe. Yeah, it could be, but I I really think they need Napoli to, to pick it up. You know, I mean, he's he's one of their power guys, and and uh, he really has to uh, pick it up. I mean, uh, Mike Carp could become a factor in the series with uh, the left-handed stick, and uh, uh, Salta Lamacchia could be a big factor here as well. So I think. Uh, uh, when you get all these right-handed uh, pitchers, uh, power pitchers, most of them, um, it's, it's tough on the right-handed hitters. But one of the two of those guys really have to step up and do a good job. John Farrell has kind of hinted that Xander Bogarts might get a start. It seems like possibly in game two. Does that make sense to you against a power right-hander like Scherzer? Would you rather see him in here against somebody like Sanchez who throws hard in his own right? Well, it, it makes sense for me because of this. I, I think Will Millbrooks is really struggling. And uh, you, you need a different look. I mean, uh, Millibrooks is not a patient hitter. He's a very aggressive hitter. And he's not going to walk very much. At least Bogarts, we saw, walked twice in the, in, the, in the game he played against Tampa Bay. So they kind of need that in the lineup. And, uh, and uh, it's a great stage for him, you know. I mean, this is, this is going to be his biggest stage. And, and we'll see how he responds. I think uh, we're all kind of looking forward to seeing this kid and what he's going to become, and I think this is a great way. If he can do it against a, a Max Scherzer, the, the guy who will be the Cy Young Award winner, uh, you know, that would be unbelievable. Everything uh, Scherzer throws moves. I, I feel like it's something Bo Bogarts has never seen before. Nick, these teams are so evenly matched. Uh, is there one area that one may have an advantage over the other that, that maybe isn't being bullpen for the Red Sox, a bullpen for the Tigers, a back of the rotation, something like that? I think what, what I mentioned before, I think the speed factor, you know, the, the, the top of the order, with Ellsbury and Victorino, I, I, you know, the uh, Tigers can't match that. I mean, yeah. Austin Jackson stole eight bases all year. Uh, he has a low OBP and the whole bit. So I think uh, that's where they really beat them good, I think. And, uh, and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, the defense. I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes defense doesn't come into play, and I'm not sure it will in this series. But, you know, there's always that opportunity for a ball to get through that, like uh, Stephen Drew or or uh, Millibrooks or Pedroia could get that maybe these guys can't get to. Yeah. Um, so that could be a factor as well. The outfield defense, the uh, Cabrera being slowed up at third base. Uh, you know, will, you, will they bunt a lot on him? Will they will they try to top the ball to third base to see make him make a play? I mean, you, you know, things like that could come into play. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating here when Game One gets underway at 8:07 tonight. Two evenly matched teams, the Red Sox and the Tigers. Not a lot of difference between them. We'll start getting some answers to these questions tonight. Thanks, Nick. Thanks to Karen.